Today's topic is going to be understanding your pull through. This is really important because when you pull a compound bow back and it stops, you also have the ability to continue to pull a little bit harder or you can creep forward a little bit or be right at the front edge of what we refer to as the valley. So if you think about a curve of a compound bow as you pull it back or what people refer to as the power curve, as you draw the bow, it goes up to peak weight. So it'll go up to peak weight. Some bows are very slow and smooth up to the peak weight. Some get there higher, all that affects speed. But then as you get to that peak weight, you might pull it for a while and then your let off begins. And so you're gonna go down in weight and you get into that valley. For some bows, the valley is very short, meaning if you start to let up, it's immediately wanting to take that string away from you. On some bows, that valley's longer, a little bit more forgiving, and you can kind of sit in the pocket a lot easier. And one style is preferred by some archers, and another is obviously gonna be preferred by other ones too. That's why we have these options, high let off cams, low let off cams, some cams that are speed cams are more aggressive and more demanding. Other ones, like I said, kind of, for me, allow you to be a little bit more lazy in the pocket. But there is a difference on where you're at in that valley, whether you pull back and you're at the front edge of that valley or you're pulling a little bit harder just with how you anchor and how you like to how you like to be in the dynamics of your shot, you might be pulling harder on that as well. Or the flip side is you pull hard to begin with, but you start to just aim and aim and you focus on the aiming more so than the continual pull. And what'll happen is instead of your arrow continually pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling like this, the arrow actually starts to creep forward and creep forward and creep forward. Now this is something that some people who I've taught to shoot a tension release, they tell me I'm pulling as hard as I can, but I'm just looking at their arrow sitting on the rest and I can see it just creeping forward and creeping forward and creeping forward. This is an indicator of either your leverage and how you're pulling or also the collapse of that front shoulder. But this is something that you can monitor yourself and something that really helps you understand the importance of that front shoulder being down and forward and being braced and the continual pull against that back wall. So just like you saw there at the beginning, what you need to do is if you draw your bow back and you put a camera in a place where as you're raising up to that target, your bow is always in the same place in front of that camera. Take a note of a reference point on your arrow, whether it's where that bushing sits on one of the decals on your riser or where the front of your point of your arrow sits in relation to the front of your riser. Or you could also put a piece of tape on here and when you draw back and it stops, have someone mark that tape with a line so that you can see a reference point on that line so when you're at full draw. Now when you have that and you've put a camera in that position or if you're a coach or you're coaching someone and helping them with archery, this is something that is kind of fun to watch because there's times where people tell you they're doing one thing but clearly when you look at that reference, you realize they're doing something different. Now an Olympic style recurve shooter who's using a clicker, this is really easy to watch for them because as they continue to pull and pull and pull and pull, that arrow is sliding back past the clicker that's on their riser and when they've pulled it past it, it'll click and that's their indicator to let that arrow go. Now with compound archers, we're not shooting clickers because most of our cams aren't that spongy, but your rear wall pressure is definitely relative to your accuracy on the target. I'll promise you that. 
So I'm gonna make a few shots right here and I'm gonna just let you zoom in and take a look at as I'm shooting the release that I'm using right now, I'm using my silverback, as I'm letting off and slowly building pressure and trusting that float, I want you to be able to see that reference and visualize that. And then towards the end, I'll kind of let you see what happens if my shoulder starts to creep and I start to relax and you'll be able to see that arrow go forward. But let's make a couple good shots here first. And make sure my sight's set. All right. Okay, I am on my pocket and I'm in a I'm in the place I like on my valley right now. I am now letting off my safety and I'm pulling. Pull, 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 pull till that shot goes off. All right. Now I'm gonna do this again, only this time. I'm gonna intentionally pull, I'm gonna have a little bit more preload. So I'm gonna pull just a little bit harder before I let off my safety and then continue my pull. So raise up, draw, I have a little bit more on that wall right now than before, letting off my safety. And you can see that shot activated much faster than the first one, but you could see the difference on that pull pressure. Now this is something that is such a refined skill. This is a mind muscle connection and it is very, very finite. And this is something that only comes with reps. And it's something that Honestly, even when I change bows, the one thing that I try to reduce the amount of changing I do is the cam system because that feel and that finesse really does separate different levels of archers is understanding that pull, that power curve and that feel and that finesse. So that's why even though I've changed models a few times, I like sticking with the same cam system because I'm not completely changing my feel. I'm just, complete, I'm just changing my fit. So learning this really small skill of what to feel on your back wall, it is awesome once you learn to do it. But I will warn you, the more you change this part of the equation, especially if you're a new archer, the longer it's gonna take for you to understand this finesse. This is something that comes with reps and staying with the same thing. The more you change this equation, the harder it is for your mind and your muscles are gonna to be to understand what that preload and what that feel is like. So try to stay on one type of system if you're working on this don't bounce around on it but i will tell you if you dedicate a season to one cam and dedicate a season to really focusing on your back wall pressure and your pull through you are going to change your own game trust me all right here we go one more time for a perfect one Letting off my safety. Pull, 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 pull. Right in there. 